We are about to determine both a subnet's broadcast address, which is important, and the range of valid addresses for that same subnet, which is really important when you start doling out the addresses. And we're going to do it with the exact same calculation. We're actually getting three important pieces of subnetting info here. One of them has already been given to us. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about as we approach this question first. What is the range of valid IP addresses for the subnet 210-46-111-0-25. That's good information to have if you happen to be the network admin for the subnet 210-46-111-0-25. You don't want to hand out addresses that are on another subnet. So we simply begin the process by converting that IP address to a binary string, big surprise I know, and then identifying the host bits. And with a slash 25 subnet mask we know the deal, the last seven bits are going to be the host bits. So those are the ones that I've bolded. It looks like an ooh at the end there, but it's just 7-0. So here's our address, 210-46-111-0 uh, slash 25, but here's that address written out and the host bits identified. Now we're about to determine the broadcast address and the range of valid IP addresses for this subnet, and we already have one important piece of information that explains one of those addresses that we're subtracting when we calculate the number of valid host addresses on a subnet. First, the address with all zeros for the host bits is the subnet address itself. And I know this comes as no shock to you because we've been calling it the subnet address, but you might not have thought about you know, can we actually give that address to a host? And sometimes this is called the all zeros address, and it doesn't mean 32 zeros, it means all zeros for the host bits. This is not a valid host address. So there's one piece of info right there, 210-46111-0. That is going to be our all zeros address. <clears throat> now the reason we care about the host bits is that the address with all ones for host bits, that's the broadcast address for that particular subnet. This is also known as the all ones address, and this is also not considered a valid host address. And the all zeros and all ones addresses, those addresses are the reasons we subtract two when we're determining the number of valid hosts on a subnet. Everything in the middle, as you would expect, is fair game. All addresses between the all zeros address and the all ones address are valid host addresses for this particular subnet. Now we know that 210.46.111.0 is the subnet number, but what's the broadcast address? If you haven't calculated that, calculate it really quick. You may just be able to look at it and do it, but if you change those host bits to ones, you have the broadcast address, and it is 210. 46 111 127. So we had the subnet address, that's our all zeros address, and then the broadcast address, our all ones address, and every address in the middle can be given out for that subnet. So it would be 210 46 111 1 through 210 46 111 126. So it's just that quick. Now let's tackle a question with a smaller subnet mask which is going to give us more host bits, a little bit more of a calculation. Something else I want to show you here too. Determine the broadcast address and the range of valid IP addresses for the subnet 150.10.64.0 slash 18. Hmm. Well, let's have a look. The conversion with the host bits in bold and we see this time we have a whole bunch of them, right? 14 of them, Oops, excuse me, 14 of them to be exact. So we know this is the subnet address. This is the all zeros address. It's one of the two invalid addresses we're going to deal with. Now, what will the address be when all the host bits are set to 1? Well, I've done that here for you, and it's going to be 150, 10, 127, 255. And the reason I like to throw this one in is just a quick little reminder that you can't just concentrate on the host bits being set to one. Now, some people, and every time I put this out there, you know, someone's gonna, gonna write, it's fine, or someone will tweet and say, hey, wait a second, you know, why is that third octet, you know, 127 when all the host bits just add up to 63? Well, the thing is, the 64 bit was already set. It was set in the subnet part of it. So in that third octet, when our host bits are zeros, the total is still 64 because that 64 bit is set. When, when we set all the host bits in octet three to ones, remember that 64 bit is still set. So the broadcast address, again, adding it across, is 150, 10, 127, 255. 
But again, it's a, it's a quick calculation because you've got the subnet address, they're giving you that. The broadcast address, you can do that quickly and everything in the middle is a valid IP address. And by the way, the range of valid IP addresses there is 150.10.64.1 through 150.10.127.254. That's it. Now we're going to tie all this together and we are going to get to subnet from the beginning and that is coming up next.